The year is 1980, and the date is November 20th. There are a bunch of beds in the room, and there's a strong odor of antiseptic. It's a hospital, and that's where I wake up. I realize I'm not dead, even though that was my goal. After three failed attempts, it dawned on me that if I'm destined to live in this world, I better learn how. And this led to my quest to learn a better way to live. And ironically, this quest started 31 years ago on this very day. I had to look for a lot of answers, and I needed four characteristics. And over the last 14 years, I've managed to put them together in a framework that now guides my life. It needed to be simple and friendly, but it also needed to be memorable and obviously not take a lot of work, and it must be easy to adopt. Having also worked as a video producer, I truly believe in the power of stories and how they can bring abstract concepts to life and make them palpable. So I dedicated a third of my book to 21 true stories, which I organized into six life spaces that revolve around yourself, your partner, your community, and your friends, your work, your money, and your kids. But before I move forward, I want to make one thing clear. I am neither a psychologist nor a philosopher. I am just a recovering engineer. <laughs> so, with a show of hands, could I see how many of you in the audience use your minds to make decisions? <laughs> Little higher. Okay, that's almost all of you. Wow. What if I told you that your mind is being hijacked by an imposter? And to make matters worse, your survival instincts are working together to feed and protect this imposter that's not you. I know these are wild accusations, so let me introduce you to a cast of unseen characters that work behind the scenes to hijack your life. Interestingly, though, these same characters also help you reach higher levels of joy and fulfillment. Let's get started and meet our first character, the pig. The pig mimics the behavior of the animal it represents, but also is an acronym which reminds us of our drive to pursue instant gratification. The primary motive of the pig is to grab, to feed, to accumulate, and to find pleasure. Now let's meet our second character, the ape. Apes by nature are shy and non-confrontational, much like my acronym, which represents our drive to avoid painful experiences. Together, these form our basic instincts that make us move away from pain and towards pleasure. Let's meet our next character, the big you. I call this self your natural self, one that's clear, beautiful, and connected to all of life. Together, this trio work really well together when it comes to feeding and protecting each other. But let's not forget our mind, our clever, intelligent mind that's always thinking, solving problems, and performing tricks. Many traditions refer to this as the monkey mind, but since we have another primate in our caste, I shall not use it today to prevent any confusion with the ape. Your mind creates an identity for you 
which I refer to as the ego. This mind-made self is addicted to your achievements, accumulations, and failures. With the introduction of the ego, the pig and the ape get very confused about who the real you is. So the question becomes, how does one distinguish between your ego and your natural self? The answer, after years of searching and failing and trying again, is simply be aware. Be aware of the powerful forces inside. There are three distinct states that we vacillate when it comes to becoming aware. When you're unaware, you let your pig and the ape run the show. They call the shots. They're involuntary and operate below the level of thought, making quick, hasty, impulsive decisions. Very good when it comes to facing real danger, but most often, they tend to lead to short-term and suboptimal results. When you start to use your minds, we start to analyze, evaluate pros and cons, consider consequences over time, and make rational decisions. These rational decisions tend to lead to some amazing results, but they also tend to drive the corrupt ones. The catch at this state is that your mind can be hijacked by the imposter and controlled by it, which is your ego. To go beyond blind instincts and pure logic, we need to really be aware of the motives behind these decision makers and be open to intuition and inspiration. Having identified these culprits, we gently set them aside and make room for guidance from a larger intelligence beyond our thinking mind. I'd like to share two stories that will capture the essence of my message to you. Roughly three years ago, our neighbor celebrated their son's wedding. And it was a big wedding, and we all lent a hand. And it was a grand success. We received a beautiful thank you card, and we read it and left it on the ledge. Our 10-year-old son at that time opened it and said, Papa, I am offended that they did not mention my name. I'm not sure if it was the look I gave him or what. He quickly restated, Papa, my ego is offended that they did not mention my name. <laughs> now, if you think that's cool, listen to this one. Roughly the same summer, I had introduced the monkey mind or the ego to our eight-year-old daughter. My wife was very concerned that she was too young for this deep stuff. About a few weeks later, our daughter came to me one morning and said, Papa, is it my monkey mind that is telling me that I'm ugly? I was speechless. When words finally came out, I said, of course. Who else could say something like that? Every time I recall this incident, I still get the chills. Imagine this going on in the mind of an eight-year-old. Not just my eight-year-old, but every young woman out there who is unaware that there is a monkey inside constantly tricking them. Even children can comprehend and blossom with the mindset that they are not their egos. All we need to do is introduce them to the pig, ape, and the ego. All you'll need are these three characters in any form to make them serve as visual reminders. It is my hope and dream that we can create an enlightened society where inner awareness empowers people to thrive in harmony. And the path to joy and fulfillment is actually quite simple. Be keenly aware and mind your pig, 
your ape, and your ego. In closing, remember, you are not your ego. You are much more and connected to the source of all of life. And ladies and gentlemen, that's an idea worth living. Thank you. Thank you.